If you just got yourself a DJI Pocket 3 and you're wondering how to use it, this video is for you. In this quick start video, I'm gonna show you the layout of this camera, as well as my go-to settings whenever I'm shooting travel vlogs or videos, as well as my cinematic settings. So the very first thing you wanna do is power on the camera. You can do this in one of two ways. You can hold down that red record button and the camera will power on and you can use the screen vertically like this. You can also hold it to turn it off or you can go over and flip the screen just like that and the camera powers on very quickly. I personally prefer to use the camera like this just because the menu layout is a little bit more intuitive and you have more space. Let's start with a quick tour of the camera menu and screen. On the top left, you'll see how much space you have left on your memory card. On the top right is how much battery is left. You can also tap to see the exact percentage. Just below the battery indicator is your zoom toggle, which you control with your joystick. You can zoom in or zoom out two times, or you can also tap that area and then use your joystick to change the direction or position of the camera on your gimbal. This lower right icon is also how you can get into selfie mode. So you can tap it to rotate the gimbal into selfie mode, or there's another shortcut. So here on the joystick, you can triple tap. One, two, three. And that will also get you into selfie mode. On the bottom left, you can tap and get into your recording modes. So you can go between time-lapse, slow motion, low light, video, photo, panorama, and your custom modes. We'll talk more about custom modes later on in this video. The bottom middle tells you your resolution and your frame rate, and you can swipe up to adjust this. I'll talk more about these custom settings later on in this video as well. For now, we're gonna continue on with the menu tour. Over here in the far left, if you tap that icon, you'll get into some advanced gimbal shooting modes, such as face auto detect, which focuses on any face that enters the frame, or dynamic framing, where you can choose one of nine boxes and the camera will always focus in that area. Finally, there's spin shot, which puts the camera in flashlight mode with the camera facing straight out, and the camera will rotate in 180 degrees or 90 degrees, depending on what you choose. All right, back to the main menu. So you can also swipe left to preview any of the media that you have recorded on the camera, or you can swipe right to access basic camera settings. We'll talk more about these later on in this video as well, or you can swipe down to unlock general settings. We're gonna start with general settings first and then get on to the custom settings that I adjust here. Now, if you wanna get shooting right away, this camera is more or less set to auto, so you can easily just start shooting without fiddling with any of the settings. But to get the most out of this camera, I really recommend getting into the settings. So the first thing we're gonna do is swipe down, and I'll explain all of these icons here and what they do. On the top right, you'll find your custom presets. This is where you set your custom presets to activate whenever you hit that mode button on the bottom, so you can easily swipe between them. The next icon here is for screen rotate and capture. So if you have this enabled, whenever you power on the camera, it will turn on and automatically start recording. This can be really handy if you need to get into recording mode really fast. While in this mode, if you wanna override it and not start recording, you can just press on the power button to start up the camera without recording. If you do have this setting enabled, you can have it set up to start up in any custom modes or your last settings, video, low light, or hyperlapse mode. The next icon here lets you control your screen brightness. If you wanna conserve your battery life, it might be good to have it on a lower end of the spectrum here. And next to that is selfie tracking mode. So when this is enabled, the camera will automatically start tracking a face whenever the camera is in selfie mode. Below that are gimbal modes, and I go between these a lot because it really depends on how you wanna be shooting with your gimbal. But first we have follow mode, which follows the camera panning up, down, right, or left. We also have tilt lock, which is probably my most used mode, but this only follows when panning left and right. Tilt is locked at the horizon. And finally, we have FPV mode, where the camera horizon dips left and right, and the camera follows the pan and tilt axis. There's also a fourth hidden mode here, all lock, which you activate by holding down on the joystick. So when I do that, you'll notice that there's an indicator here telling us that we're in all lock mode. And when I release, that mode goes away. All right, back to these settings. Next, we have gimbal rotational speed. So by default, the gimbal moves at a pretty moderate speed, which is suitable for most conditions. I mostly leave it on default, but you might also want to switch it over to slow if you want to take slightly smoother videos or switch it over to fast if you're trying to capture a fast moving subject. 
Next is orientation. You can tap on this to go between landscape orientation, portrait orientation, or auto rotation. I personally like having this on auto rotate, which means that the direction of my screen is gonna dictate what type of orientation I'm shooting in, which means if my screen is in vertical, I'm shooting in portrait mode, but if my screen is in horizontal, I'm shooting in landscape mode. And finally, if you tap on this lower left gear icon, it unlocks advanced menu settings. Now there are quite a few in here. I'm not gonna go over every single one. I'm just gonna focus on the few that I think you should change first. So the first one is wireless mics. So if you bought the adventure combo, it comes with a DJI Mic 2 transmitter. And this is where you would connect your transmitter. The section is also where you can control other settings on the transmitter, such as headphone volume, if you have monitoring headphones attached. You can turn the LED light on or off, vibration, audio to video sync. If this is on, the transmitter will automatically do backup internal recording while also recording audio to the Pocket 3. You can also enable your low cut filter, 32-bit float recording, and also format the transmitters or erase all of the recordings. When the transmitter is connected, you can also go to the section to check out how much remaining battery life is left and how much internal recording storage there is. Next is gimbal startup direction. By default, the startup direction is forward, but if you want to start up in selfie mode, you can have it set to backwards instead. Next, we have gimbal joystick speed. You can swipe up and down to adjust the speed that the camera zooms, as well as how quickly the gimbal responds. I personally like having the zoom set to one and the gimbal set to about five. Next is time code. So this is an advanced professional setting, but basically it helps you synchronize audio and video between different cameras or devices that also have the time code function. Next we have screen off and recording. So the default is set to never, but you may want to have this be less if you're filming for long periods of time and you want to conserve battery, such as when you're filming a time lapse. Next we have continue last live stream. So you can actually live stream from this camera when it's connected to the DJI Mimo phone app. And finally on the bottom we have format, which is how you delete and reset your memory card, and also factory reset. Next, we're gonna dive into my exact custom settings. But before we dig into these settings here, let's first go over your resolution and frame rate. So if you're in video mode, you just wanna swipe up. And now you can choose resolution, 4K, 2.7K, or 1080p. 4K is the maximum resolution. And your frame rate can be as low as 24 or up to 60. So I don't always shoot in 4K 60. Most of the time, I'm actually shooting in 4K 30 instead. Over here, you can also choose your aspect ratio. So you can shoot in one to one, which is a square, or you can choose 16-9, which is a more traditional video format. Fills up the entire screen here. Next, we're gonna dive into my exact custom settings. So we're gonna swipe right, and we're gonna talk now about all these features here. So if you wanna get up and running quickly with this camera and not fiddle with these professional settings, then just tap on this yellow pro button and you'll see that they all mostly get hidden. So there's really only two things to adjust here. You can say glamour effects on or off. Glamour effects are something that you only can adjust whenever the camera is connected to the DJI Mimo phone app. So you can actually have this on all the time and you won't even see the glamour effects in your final video. So I like to have it on just in case because I do like the skin smoothing feature in the glamour effects in particular. Below that is image adjustment. So again, you can have it on default or you can go over to custom. When it's on custom, you can now choose your sharpness levels. You can go down to negative two or even up to one or two or your noise reduction also can go up to one or down to negative two. Personally, I prefer to leave this on default. Now, if you wanna unlock those pro settings, just tap on that pro icon until it turns yellow. The first setting here that you might want to adjust is your exposure. So even if you have everything set on auto, you can still choose your ISO range as well as your exposure compensation value. Now I would leave the ISO alone unless you really know what you're doing, but the EV might be helpful to adjust. Now if you find that your shot is a little too bright or too dark, you can make adjustments to your EV. Another cool trick about this camera is that if you're recording, you can actually change your EV while recording. So you just wanna swipe right, and now you can go up or down to adjust your EV. But back over to exposure settings. So if you wanna change this to manual, you just press on M, and now you can have control over your shutter speed, as well as more in-depth control over your ISO. 
So again, I would leave ISO to the default and your shutter speed if you want to shoot in cinematic settings. This is where you would change your shutter speed to be double that of your frame rate. So if I'm shooting in 4K 60 frames per second, which is the maximum resolution and frame rate for this camera, and I want to shoot in cinematic settings, then my shutter speed should be 1 over 1 20th of a second, which is double that of the 60 frames per second frame rate. This is seen as cinematic because it gives you a natural motion blur to your shots. I think it's a really subtle effect. I don't see a huge difference whenever I'm shooting in cinematic settings. So I personally don't shoot in it very often, but whenever you are shooting in cinematic settings, you often need ND filters to help balance out the light. And you'll also need a gimbal for the camera because most of the cameras out there don't come with their own built-in gimbal. So if you do want to shoot cinematic settings, the DJI Pocket 3 is actually a great camera to do that with. But like I said, for most of my videos, like they're just casual travel vlogs. So I leave the exposure on auto to keep things simple. Next to that is white balance. So you can put this over to manual white balance, but again, I prefer to keep these on auto. And I only touch this if I really know what I'm doing or if I'm shooting indoors and I really feel like I need to change the white balance. Next we have glamour effects, which I mentioned earlier. They're only gonna be applicable if you connect the camera to the DJI Mimo phone app. So I leave them on by default. Next is color. So you can tap this to go through three different settings. You have normal color, HLG 10-bit, which is basically HDR video, or D-Log M 10-bit. Now, if you're shooting in D-Log M, this does require post-processing knowledge to properly color grade, but this gives you more professional controls over the dynamic range of your shot. Most of the time I leave this on normal. Next is focus mode. So you have three different options here to choose from. You have single shot, which is great to use whenever you're shooting a subject that isn't moving, continuous focus, which is ideal for shooting a moving subject, and product showcase, which focuses on subjects closer to the camera. It won't default to a face. Finally, we have image adjustment, which I talked about earlier. You can control your sharpness or the noise reduction, but I personally like to just leave this on default. I really am about keeping things simple. And I find that when this camera is mostly in auto settings, I'm pretty happy with the results. Within this setting, you can also tap on the little microphone icon here, and here are your audio settings that you can choose. So your channel can be stereo or two track audio or mono single track audio. You can also have wind reduction off or on, and you can set the direction of the microphones to be a front facing pickup pattern, front and back, or all directions. I personally leave this on all directions, wind reduction on, and the channel to stereo. Now, if you have the DJI Mic 2 connected, you'll notice that you'll see these audio levels bouncing up top, indicating that the microphone is connected. You're also gonna swipe down, go over to the gear icon, a wireless microphone, and you can again see the audio channel going back and forth, as well as see the percentage of battery left and the amount of storage left on the transmitter. You can connect a second transmitter if you have a second DJI Mic 2. Now, if you go over to this audio setting here and you have the transmitter connected, you'll notice that there's a couple more or a few more things that you can adjust here. You can set the transmitter gain. So if you're finding the audio levels to be a little bit low, you might want to boost it. And if they're too high, then you can reduce it. I generally leave it at zero. You can also mute the transmitter in case you don't want it to pick up any audio at all. And you can also turn the transmitter noise reduction off or on. This is actually something you can do as a shortcut using the transmitter. So if you go over to the power button, you can tap on the power button and that turns the wind reduction off and on. You can also use this transmitter to start and stop recording by pressing the blue link button. So those are basic video settings, but now let's go over to low light video settings. So basically this helps you shoot in low light, but the main thing that it does is restricts your resolution and frame rate. So you can shoot at a maximum of 4K 30 and you still have the same settings here that you can change like in the other video section, but they are a little bit more limited. So if you're gonna be shooting in low light, you arguably wanna be using this low light setting, but personally, I find that shooting in regular video in low light looks just fine. So that's up to you. Next is slow motion video. So for this one, all of your main settings are down here. You can choose your resolution and your frame rate. So 120 frames per second is regular slow motion. You can do that in 4K, 2.7K, or 1080p. 
but if you want to shoot in ultra slow motion, which is 240 frames per second, then you can only do that in 1080p. The final video setting here is time lapse mode. So all of your settings are going to be down here. You can have a regular time lapse. You can set it to be one of these presets, crowds, clouds, sunset, or custom. You can also set it to be a motion time lapse or a moving time lapse. And so for this, you want to swipe up and you can set the parameters. So this is how often the video is shooting and this is how long your final video is going to be. I typically don't do longer than a 10 minute duration video, which gives you about 10 seconds of final video. You can also set your own custom parameters so you can determine where exactly the camera starts recording and ends recording, or you can choose for it to go right to left or left to right. I find that the left to right or the right to left presets are generally the easiest way to go about it. And finally, you have hyperlapse. So I typically leave this on auto, but if you want to, you can choose the exact rate that you want it to go for. You can go up to 10 times or 30 times fast. But again, I find auto is generally pretty good for this. And this is good to have if you want to capture a moving time lapse in which you're walking, driving, or running. So those are all of the video modes in here. There's also a photo mode. For this one, there are not a lot of settings to choose from. You can choose your aspect ratio, 69 or 1 to 1. 1 to 1 is again that square. And you can also do a countdown timer. You can have it off, 3 seconds, 5 seconds, or 7 seconds. If you swipe right, there's also a few other settings here. You can choose the exposure value as well as the EV. You can also choose your white balance, your format. It can be JPEG or JPEG plus RAW. And you can also choose your focus mode, single or continuous. And finally, you have panorama shooting mode. So for this one, you want to swipe up and you can choose if you want to do a 3x3 three three panorama or a 180 degree panorama, as well as choose any countdown. Well, that's it for this quick start guide. I hope that you got a lot out of it. Please leave me any questions in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. And if you want more content about the Pocket 3, I've made quite a few videos about it, including an accessories guide, a vlogging setup guide, tips and tricks, and even a quick video about the 10 best gimbal moves for beginners. So check out those videos if you're interested and I'll see you in the next one.